Welcome to the flock. Let's dive into using both enthalpy and the energy of heating equation to calculate for calories. Stick around to see how to answer questions just like this one. So before we can calculate for a calorie, first we need to know what the conversion factor for a calorie even is. There are two different kinds of calories. You've probably only heard of one, and that's the food calorie, represented with an uppercase C. The other kind of calorie is with a lowercase c. Now that just means there's a smaller unit associated with it, hence the smaller c. And the uppercase c has a bigger unit associated with it, kilograms, as opposed to grams. And since kilograms are bigger, it gets the uppercase C. Let's talk about the lowercase calorie first. Is the amount of energy required to heat one gram of water, which isn't a lot. So if you check it out, I'm weighing out one gram of water in a little tiny beaker. For size reference here, this is the beaker. It's very tiny. There's only a little bit of water in there. And if we were to heat this little tiny bit of water by one degree Celsius, that's equivalent to the energy of one lowercase calorie. We already know that as 4.184 joules from the specific heat of water and the energy of heating equation video linked in the description below. So 4.184 joules is equivalent to one lowercase calorie. We can also represent this conversion factor as one lowercase calorie is equivalent to one gram of water and raise it by one degree Celsius. In other words, if we were to add heat to that little tiny beaker of one gram of water and a thermometer showed it raising from 12 to 13, that heat down here would be equivalent to one lowercase calorie, which is also equivalent to 4.184 joules of energy. But the real calorie, as we're familiar with it, or the food calorie, is this uppercase calorie. Now that one's a bit different in that it's dealing with a lot more water. One food calorie, or uppercase calorie, is equivalent to the amount of energy required to heat one kilogram of water. So that's a lot more water. Check it out on the scale. One kilogram of water, this entire beaker by one degree Celsius. That is actually the one uppercase calorie or the calorie unit you see on your food labels. So check those out side by side just to see the sheer difference in volume that we're talking about of water here, both of which are measuring the difference of one degrees Celsius. However, there's a substantial amount more water to heat in a food calorie. Since one uppercase calorie is equivalent to one kilocalorie, which is 1,000 lowercase c calories, we can just manipulate our previous conversion factor and move it over three spaces for the 1,000 lowercase calories to end up with a conversion factor of 4,184 joules per one uppercase calorie. So that's a lot of energy per one food calorie. And there's not many things out there that only have one calorie. Another way we can represent this uppercase calorie is by saying, if we heated up one kilogram of water enough so that it changed one degree Celsius, now remember, one kilogram of water is a lot of water, that would be equivalent to the heat energy for one big uppercase C calorie. So really let this sink in for a second. For example, if you were to eat 200 calories worth of potato chips in one setting, which is pretty easy to do, how much of this could it heat up? One degree Celsius. If we need to cancel out the calories, we're gonna put the one cal on the bottom and one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius on top, we end up with 200 kilograms of water by one degrees Celsius. In other words, you could take 200 of these beakers and heat them all by one degree Celsius by eating 200 food calories worth of potato chips. No, really, let that sink in for a minute. Now that we know what the conversion factors for a calorie is, let's go ahead and solve the question we opened this video with. If we had the delta H of the reaction as follows for glucose, which is just sugar, how many calories, that's uppercase C, are in 27 grams of glucose, i.e. one can of Red Bull? Now, why am I being so specific with this sugar calories? Well, as you know, food has many different kinds of chemicals in it. Another unit of energy that we find in food is starch. 
Additionally, fat can also have energy in it. Since we're starting with grams and we're trying to find energy in calories, we're going to have to use this conversion factor. So thinking about this backwards, we're going to have to get rid of these joules, which means we can use the delta H of reaction, the kilojoules over here, to get rid of the joules. And we're also gonna have to get rid of the moles, which we could use molar mass for, and we're starting with a mass, so that's convenient. Sounds like it's time to draw a magical line to freedom. Put our given at the top of the line, which is 27 grams of sugar, C6H12O6. We're gonna put our goal at the end of the line, which is calories big C calories. Now, as we just kind of reasoned backwards, we're going to need the molar mass of the glucose sugar. That's six carbons plus 12 hydrogens plus six oxygens. That gives us a molar mass of 180 grams per mole. We can see that our grams will cancel and we'll be left with moles. We need to get rid of that mole by using our delta H of reaction value. Hmm, but wait a second, the delta H is negative. How come I didn't put the negative there? Well, if I put the negative, that means my final answer would also be negative. And although we would all love to have negative calories, it's not possible. So in this scenario, we just need the value of energy, not the sign, to indicate that it's exothermic. Now the moles will cancel, and I'm left with kilojoules. I need to get from kilojoules to calories. As we said before, we can use our new conversion factor for uppercase calories but we need to get the kilojoules into joules first in order for these to cancel. So one kilojoule is equivalent to 1000 joules. Here we see that our kilojoules cancel and we are in fact left with joules. We can finally plug in our new domino conversion factor piece and solve for calories. Now, if we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom and divide those two answers, we get 27 times one times 2,879 times 1,000 times one, all divided by 180, times one, times one, times 4,184 to give us a final value of 103.21 uppercase calories. Notice that the calories on the can say 110. How come there's a discrepancy? Well, turns out that as I mentioned before, energy can come from multiple sources, not just sugar. Notice there's also carbohydrates in this Red Bull and carbohydrates are starches and get converted to usable sugar in your body through digestion. So then what is a calorie anyways in terms of chemistry? When we look at our nutrition labels, we do in fact see that there is an uppercase C used for our calories. And calories are literally just a measurement of energy that's stored in the chemical bonds. Now remember, food is still a chemical. And when we eat it, energy is released by breaking and reforming the bonds of the food as we digest it. And as you recall from the previous enthalpy videos, breaking bonds and reforming them is all about the exothermic and endothermic processes. Of that energy that we consume, we end up using about 10% of it for digestion, 20% for physical activity, and 70% for basic functions of organs and tissues. Your brain can't make its own food. It needs glucose to live and for you to live. Therefore, we must consume said glucose in order to feed our brains and live. Keep in mind that the calorie count on the food labels indicates how much energy is stored in the chemical bonds, but not how much energy you can actually get out of it. So for example, if you were going to eat celery, that's a more fibrous food, it would take you more energy to digest the fibrous food than you actually get out of it because your body is literally a chemical reaction here. And also keep in mind that the calorie requirements are different for each human being. We all have different metabolisms, different enzymes and different activity levels. So the amount of calories that a toddler needs or somebody doing a cross country tour on a bicycle versus somebody who's elderly and metabolism is lower is going to vary greatly. Also, as a really cool side note here, since I do have a lot of family in Europe, in Austria, European food labels are labeled entirely different than the United States of America's food labels. Their calories aren't called calories. They literally call them energy and they measure their energy, their calories in units of kilojoules per kilocalorie. You should recognize the kilojoules from enthalpy calculations or delta H of reactions. So notice that when we're looking at a European food label where calories normally is, they literally have the word energy written. Here I have a packet of cooking from my last visit to my family in Europe. I brought home this packet of cooking powder. Notice that on the nutrition label, Label, it's energy. The energy is measured in kilojoules per kilocalories. So nowhere on this label do we see calories like we do in the United States.
Go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can figure out the number of sugar calories in one can of Pepsi. Ready, go. Hopefully you followed the same exact setup. We're still going to need to put our given as the first thing on the line. In this case, it's 42 grams of glucose instead of 27. We're still going to have the same molar mass of 180 for that glucose molecule. And we're still going to use the same delta H of reaction for breaking down glucose and also still negating that negative sign. Again, we can't have negative calories as our final answer. We need to convert the kilojoules to joules. So 1000 joules in one kilojoule. And we're using the same conversion factor as before, our one big C calorie per 4,184 joules. And if you calculated correctly, you should have gotten 160.56 calories. So how do we determine the calories for all those nutrition labels to begin with? We use a process called bomb calorimetry. And no, we're not bombing food. <laughs> But essentially we do take some food and we put it in a little dish underwater in a sealed container. We then ignite that food with some wires under oxygen atmosphere and let the food burn completely. As it's burning, it's heating up the surrounding water. And we measure that change in temperature of the water using a thermometer. We can assume that the energy released from the burning food is being captured by the water molecules. So we can use the energy of heating equation, Q equals C, times m times delta t, which is an equation we learned in a previous video for the energy of heating equation linked in the description below. And we can use this to solve for the energy in joules released from that reaction. We can then take those joules and convert it to calories, of course. So let's go ahead and give that concept a try then. If we were to take a potato, which is essentially starch, and we take one gram of this potato and we lit it on fire underwater in a bomb calorimeter, and we saw that it raised 50 milliliters of water surrounding the potato from 21 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius. What would be the energy in joules of that one gram of potato? We're going to use our energy of heating equation. And remember when we use this equation, it's all in reference to the water. So we don't care if there's one gram, that one gram is not going to be used as the mass here. We're thinking about using this equation from water's perspective, not the potato's perspective. We know the specific heat of water is 4.1 184 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. The mass of the water is 50 grams because we have 50 milliliters of water. Remember that water's density is one gram per one milliliter. That means if we have 50 milliliters, it's going to weigh 50 grams. So our mass here is 50 grams. Again, not one gram of potato. We're thinking about this from water's perspective. And the change in temperature is going to be 25, our final, minus the initial of 21. So 25 minus 21 gives us four degrees Celsius as our change in temperature. We see that grams cancels here, degrees Celsius cancels here, and we're left with joules. And our Q or our energy within the one gram of potato is 836.8 joules. We can then take this number and convert it to calories. But before we do that, go ahead and give this equation a try using one gram of peanut instead to represent fat calories instead of starch calories or sugar calories from earlier. Ready, go. Let's check your math. Right, you should have gotten that much energy for your one gram of peanut. Notice that it's literally double the amount of one gram of potato. This just goes to show that there's more energy extracted from the fat than there is from the starch. As promised before, we can take that value that we found from Q and figure out how many calories is in that one gram of potato. So all we have to do is use our conversion factor, 4,184 joules per one uppercase calorie to figure out how many food calories are in that many joules. There are two different ways you can solve this. I'm going to show you this way using the conversion factor now. If you're interested in using this conversion factor, stick around till after the outro to see how to do it. Let's start with our given, which is 836.8 joules from what we calculated earlier. And then we're just going to plug in our 4184 joules on the bottom and one uppercase calorie on the top so that our joules will cancel. Now it's easy to see that all we have to do is take 836.8 times 
one and divide that by 4,184. And that gives us a value of 0.2 calories in one gram of potato. We already calculated that there was 1,673.6 joules in one gram of peanut, so go ahead and figure out how many calories is that. Pause the video now. <laughs> Let's check your math. And you should have gotten 0.4 calories in your one gram of peanut. Again, if you'd like to see how to use this conversion factor instead, stick around until after the outro and I'll show you. In the next video, we will actually be performing bomb calorimetry in a jerry-rigged at-home version of a calorimeter. But before you get there, make sure that you can answer the following two questions. For sugar, which we know the delta H of the reaction as negative 2,879 kilojoules per mole, how many calories are in 67 grams of sugar, i.e. one Starbucks coffee? And also, if we took 83 grams of hamburger meat and that raised five kilograms of water from 22 degrees Celsius to 61 degrees Celsius in a bomb calorimeter, how much energy in joules was in the meat's chemical bonds? And also, how many calories was that? Please give this video a quacks up, and when you're out of luck in chemistry, subscribe to the duck. Quack you later. And stick around to see how to use that other conversion factor. No ducks, no glory. If we want to use this conversion factor, where we know one uppercase calorie is equivalent to heating one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, we can use the same setup as the heating equation, where we know that one kilocalorie would be equal to one uppercase calorie, because those are the same thing, of one kilogram of water times one degree Celsius. Now all we have to do is get rid of the kilograms and the degree Celsius. We know that the one gram of potato changed the water from 21 to 20 five degrees Celsius. So that was still a delta T of four degrees Celsius in order for those units to cancel and to be left with calories. We also need to get rid of the kilograms down here. So to do that, we're going to multiply by the kilograms of water used. Well, we used 50 milliliters, which we said was equivalent to 50 grams, but then we need to convert that to kilograms. So just move the decimal back three spaces and we end up with 0 0.050 kilograms of water. Now we see that the kilograms and the degree Celsius cancel. And if we multiply, one by four by 0 0.05, we still end up with 0 0.2 calories as our final answer. Whatever way is more comfortable for you to use, do that.